Uh, welcome in. It is a Eagles less wild card weekend that is still not over. This is how super of a wild card weekend it is. It's still not even over. We have one more game to get to, which we will, I'm sure, at length. In fact, I, I kind of found an interesting way, which I believe to be an interesting way. Harry Mays, Matt Cherico will tell me whether it is or isn't on me time here. The three of us make up the Philly Voice Sports Bed Show. Some stuff to look back on Saturday and Sunday and then also tonight. And honestly, guys, I normally have an idea of where I'd like to steer the conversation. But in this case, we've got Jacksonville, in which Harry turned into me on the text chain, which is, I can't believe I bet Jacksonville. I, I put out a tweet because of a stupid fourth down play that people were still coming back to, even though I made exponentially on Jacksonville. And then we have the Giants of all teams jammed in the middle, doing work on the Vikings. The Bills unable. I mean, like oh. the Bills hit a wall. They hit an emotional wall. And then you've got last night, which I got to be honest, folks. I didn't even stay up to see my prime time first half field goal prop hit, which I don't even know how it did hit because there were only four minutes left in the second half. So all of that aside, I have no idea where to even start. Well, I'll start it then Thank because you. the Buffalo Bills ruined my weekend. That was yeah, a god awful performance. They didn't deserve to win that game. They should have lost. Because I'd rather see Miami move on than have to watch Buffalo again in that stupid stadium with all those stupid Bills Mafia idiots. Yeah. I hope Cincinnati comes in there and cleans their freaking clock, okay? Uh, because they couldn't even cover a six-and-a-half-point number that I bet down on a five-leg parlay. The only, re the only leg that didn't hit was the stinking Buffalo Bills. So McDermott, I'm screw all these defensive head coaches. If yeah. I'm an owner and I'm and I need a head coach and I was watching this weekend, there is no fucking way that I'm hiring a defensive head coach as my next head coach. That Staley guy is an idiot. Uh -oh. And McDermott is an idiot too. Didn't we tell you? Yes. Yeah. I think like, it literally the whole came thing down. about the Chargers game, right, Matt? I mean, it, yep. we were trying to talk Harry off that ledge, and then he eventually did, and he moved yep. over to Jacksonville. And then but, I'm down 27 nothing, and I'm cursing what? your name. And, and I get it. I, I, I understand it. Look, I told an, a longtime high school buddy, track me down, right? My buddy DJ, track me down. I get a random text. I have no idea what the hell's going on. He's like, Oh, uh, who do you like, Jacksonville? Or and so I told him, I said, no, I bet Jacksonville just to win the game. So he comes back and he's like, all right, I put a grand at plus two and a half. I'm like, no, don't <laughs> bet two and a half. Like that doesn't, of course. And, and I don't know if you guys caught this, that two and a half would have covered even if they missed the kick. Right, yeah, right. Crazy as that is. So like, no, this, this was, right. we, I, I'm just happy, Matt, that we successfully talked Harry off yes. that chargers ledge oh my yeah. god Thank i mean you. it doesn't it doesn't come down i mean everybody <laughs> knows justin herbert extremely talented and even though they were missing white mike williams they're still a great squad but it really does come down to brandon staley he finds ways to lose games yeah. like it's just unbelievable at this point coming out and then not making a single second half adjustment defensively i mean it's just it's so inexcusable that Dude, you won itself. the turnover battle plus five and you had a 27 point lead and you lost i'd have fired him on the tarmac before sure. he got on the jet Everything yeah. came down to coaching, going for kicking instead of going for it, the play calling, the fact that Justin Herbert was still throwing. Like right. it felt like they were moving in mud or, or like like you were running in place. It felt like he was running in place. Yeah. Right. Like Brandon Staley was throwing the football, yet they weren't able to move the ball. They weren't able to, they, he wasn't running the ball when they were up. This guy. Was a disaster. Oh, yeah. My. They actually, they had the ball eight times after taking a 24 nothing lead. Uh, three plays, eight yards, punt. Four plays, one yard field goal. One play, negative one yard, yep. kneel it to end the half. Seven plays, 37 yards, punt. Seven plays, 45 yards, field goal. 14 plays, 58 yards, miss a field goal. Mm -hmm. And then three plays, five yards with a punt. That's disgusting. That guy Lombardi should have to give back his last name. It's a disgrace he on the great name Lombardo. of Vince. Yeah, Lombardo. It should be Matt Lombardo. <laughs> <laughs> Poor guy. I tell you, I, I can't. I can't. These coaches, they they ruin games unlike mm -hmm. any sport. It's amazing how a coach are, and speaking of which, right, because the other big one for me at least was, I don't know, can I buy a Wink Martindale jersey? Do they oh, sell those? He, he is I'm your guy. You, he is your guy. That big, When I see that big block head of his, I think oh, of yeah. you.
<laughs> and he's got God, the hat does, on too. Does he and have he the looks... biggest head you've ever seen? Yes. And okay. it's a block. You're right. He's got a block head. No. I did. I, yes, he is now six and zero oh this year, straight oh. up against the spread against first year head coaches. That guy O'Connell, McConnell, whatever the hell his name is, he's running up and down. He couldn't get the timeout right. Mike McDaniel's in Miami oh. yelling that he got a play that he said was these guys. They, they don't go through shit, and the first time they go through shit, they don't know what they're doing in the playoffs. Right. right. How about the gla- the sunglasses? He changed his sunglasses from first half to second half. McDaniel. Did you Blair. see those like designer yeah. sunglasses that he oh, had on underneath designer? that ski cap? Oh yeah. Those pro those were like South Beach glasses he had yeah, on. McDaniel's a stunner. McDaniel's definitely a stunner. And honestly, I thought he did a great job trying to keep them in the game. Yeah. Uh, I really think that they were hanging in for the most part. And I think now there's kind of a, a script that you can play the Bills with. Yeah. After seeing Miami play them that well a couple times and you know the skid that they've had recent weeks, the Bills are human and I think everybody's seeing that. I think the Chiefs are a little uh they're kind of sitting back relaxing right now looking at the rest of the AFC. I think they're a good head and shoulders above everybody else in that conference. Hey, if Waddle and Hill catch a couple of balls that were thrown right in their freaking hands or in the first half of that game, they could have won the damn thing. Yeah. Absolutely. No, it's it's a disgrace. Let's be honest. I mean, that's that's a disgrace that a third string quarterback is in that is three points away from tying that football. Game. Right. From the football factory known as Kansas State. I mean, it's Correct. not like they're pumping out quarterbacks left no. and right. No, you know? no, no. That's that's where I think it gets a, a little a little dicey. All right. Yeah. Now let's. Uh, in, I'm, in, I'm, I'm not. I'm not yeah. trying to throw shade on our buddy Barrett Brooks who went there. Okay. No. By that, no. By that statement. Okay. By, by no means, and I didn't think I didn't think so, but I'm glad you put that caveat. Right. Out there, by all means. Dogs went four and one, and the, every game went over the total. Does that influence you at all for tonight? No, uh, I am. Remember, and we can get through this here. I am under fifty-one and a half, along with the Bucks plus three and a half. So that's the <laughs> this is the only action I have outside of that one, two, three, four, five leg parlay, Harry. Mm. That is now hinging on one leg, which is the Tampa Bay Bucks money line. Remember, we have Buffalo winning money line, Jags money line, Giants plus three, Bengals money line, and now the Bucks money line. So right. Uh, that and the first half field goal prop. I, I don't. I don't know if I want to tempt fate and do anything. With, no. Are you laying one eighty for Dak Prescott to throw a pick tonight? No. And uh, okay, so I am not. But I'm curious, Matt, and and you, Harry, if what you're doing with that, because I think I may have found an end around with this prop that we can still play Dak, still make some money, but not have to lay that much. Right. You're going to parlay it with what? No, 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 oh. no, 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 no. I, I'm just curious. What are you guys doing, if anything, with the interceptions with this guy? I think I might just fade it, honestly, because I'm looking on FanDuel, and there are just too many selections that it doesn't allow me to combine with to where I'd feel comfortable. And going outside my comfort zone to, like, push for that interception just doesn't feel like something – you know, I'm, I want to do. So I think I'm just going to stay away and just secretly hope he throws one. <laughs> well, that makes sense. <laughs> and any time touchdown for Dalton Schultz is something that I'm going to invest in tonight at plus 220. Okay? okay. And I like Pollard over 50 and a half yards rushing. What do you think about those two? Pollard, I like, absolutely like. I think it's going to be a little tougher for him to run the football. But I think I took him anytime at plus 155 earlier okay. in the day because I think no matter what, he's just – even if they're throwing him, especially if they're throwing him the football. I didn't touch his – I did not touch his rushing, though. I, I don't hate that number at all. I think he's definitely going to have the opportunity. Real quick, do you know what his rushing receiving total is? If you don't have it handy. I do not. I do right. not. Um, but, no, I, I like Pollard. I like Pollard being featured, and I think that there's going to be a, a sense of desperation – that also goes into how I'm playing Dak, but um, to answer your question, for I know Matt, you had some stuff too, but I I'm fine with Pollard, absolutely. Seventy-one and a half, also for that line for rushing and receiving. Rushing and so. receiving. Oh wow, boy, that sounds better than fifty and a half rushing to me. I, I don't mind playing both, actually. Wow. Ladder. Is that on DraftKings? This one's on FanDuel. Seventy-one and a half minus one fourteen. Wow. 
I don't yeah, mind I, both. I like that a lot. I definitely like that a lot. And then you look on the other side, and Rashad White is sitting at 52 and a half. And I'm thinking under for him because I feel like no playoff experience, being that he's a rookie, they're going to rely on Leonard Fournette a lot more in this case. So, you know, while I'm here looking at these numbers, I like him under 52 and a half as well. And then going to an anytime touchdown prop, I was looking just value wise and seeing Mike Evans at plus 210 kind of surprised me. I, I was thinking more for him around the 140 maybe 150 range so for anything over 200 i think for for the main cuz of that wide receiver core yeah how can how can you not for plus 210 so i really like him to put one in tonight pollard is 76 and a half on DraftKings combo good hmm. interesting good. rushing no, I and like receiving that. i like that a lot okay all right so this is what i found and i believe it's still at 21 and a half so you're laying a ridiculous number, as we know, right? For what was it, 180? 180 on DraftKings. It's it's too much. Unless you're gonna even like even still, you're gonna parlay that. That's fine. I mean, I don't know. You're gonna take a heaviest favorite in the NHL tonight, something along those lines. So who, who's Bethune Cookman playing? Now, Floor, don't don't bet that because that's a tight <laughs> spread. I know because I bet it. But point being is like e even if you add that to a ridiculous heavy favorite you're probably bringing it down to like 150 140 something like that mm -hmm. so even still i don't think it's worth it what i would do though is everybody in the world knows dak prescott's having an interception problem including and especially kellen moore and mike mccarthy so i think what they've done and what i'm banking and betting on them doing this week is putting in either game plan or just more emphasis on the game plan balls out fast but he still has to get the ball out and he still has to get it quickly to people. If it's CeeDee Lamb, quick. If it's Tony Pollard, and that's where I think the receiving yards comes into play. Over 21 and a half passing completions for mm. Dak Prescott because I still think they have to throw the football, but clearly they're not going to ask him to drop back and throw deep a lot. So I think there's this build the confidence game plan, fellas, to get Dak some easy and early completions and that's going to put him over the top. So I don't even want to tempt fate with attempts. I just want to take his completions and go over 21 and a half. And that should be minus 110. Or even if it's minus 120, I'm okay paying that as opposed to minus 150 on a two-leg parlay where you're hoping the Winnipeg Jets don't shit their pants. <laughs> or whoever it may be. Yeah, I don't mind that at all. I, I like it for sure. For sure. I think that's all I got on this game at least. I just thinking about like the whole Tom Brady, you know, aspect of him in the playoffs again. There's just not much that I want to beat around with. There was one more defensive prop I was interested in, and that was Micah Parsons to record a sack at minus 102. Um, I think with a somewhat injured offensive line, I mean, in a primetime game, it seems like Micah Parsons is always showing out. And he's always trying to be on the, the highlight reel in this case. So I think he should be able to get to get to, get to the quarterback tonight. And he's looking for a bounce back game because his past month has been uh, somewhat lackluster for sure. Hmm. For some reason, I believe in the Cowboys tonight. You do? Yeah, mm -hmm. I do. I think we're going to have a lot of uh, final five, six minutes of the fourth quarter discussing where does Tom Brady hang it up after tonight? Or does he end up in San Francisco, Las Vegas, uh, Miami? Because uh, it'll be the, his final game for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Now, we didn't mention San Francisco at all, uh, but they were the only game this weekend that was not decided by one score. So, right. Correct. any thoughts on Brock Purdy and that, you know, that performance? And even Geno, you know, Geno played a good game, but just not enough, obviously, against that offense. No, I, I don't think. So, for San Francisco, I, I just, I don't know what to make of them, right? Every time oh. it gets tight, they find a way to pull away. Yep. And that's usually the sign of they're complete. A great football team. Yeah, exactly. they're complete. So I, I right now, Brock Purdy has to throw two interceptions and miss a couple of open guys. And I don't know if San Francisco fellas has even been put in that position once since Brock Purdy took right. over. Al Shanahan he's is an amazing. amazing coach. He's an amazing play caller. He really is. I mean, yeah. you, you talk about a coach calling game uh, plan and plays to the strengths of his players. He really finds a way to do it. And I, I love the Niners. And, uh, you know, the thing that jumped out at me is Debo Samuel is a he is healthy. That, that Did you see him rocket down the sideline on that touchdown? Oh, you're right, yeah. He's 100%. Yeah, they're going to be scary. And that's scary. Yeah, that they're a force to be reckoned with, especially yeah. defensively. I mean, easily the best defense in, in the league right now. And now, 
like you're saying, they, like it comes down to Brock Purdy. And when you give the guy such minimal room to make errors, you know, yeah. he's, he's easily in the best position to be successful. So well, one agree. other thing that jumped out at me about the other game on Saturday night, uh, what did Bosa say as he walked by the I official where that official ran him down and, and basically confronted him. I thought he was way out of line. Bosa was walking to the sidelines. He's walking away. He wasn't like escalating the situation, said something under his breath. And that official uh, took it upon himself to yep. enter the game. And I thought that was bullshit. Now, the Chargers <laughs> deserve to lose, but that was bullshit. That was a big part of why they did lose. Yeah. No, absolutely. I, now, I have no idea. We we got no explanation from no. it. If you're going to make a call like that that impacts the game, then we deserve some sort of explanation, right? Agreed. I mean, they, they do that if they blew a replay, they'd give us explanation. Right. So I don't know why that was – I haven't heard anything as far as why. Did you? I didn't either, but I'm going to be trying to dig that up today if I can. Now, did you see – I did, I paid – I put this to you guys over the weekend the Darren Ravel tweet yeah when the Chargers went up 27 to nothing a bettor bet 1.4 million apparently allegedly on the Chargers to win the game to net only eleven thousand two hundred dollars Jacksonville of course wins 31 30 DK Sportsbook confirmed that the bet was indeed made Aton, your thoughts couple thoughts first off that guy is either working with the book or has some sort of betting relationship with the book and look to be fair because you know i, I work for stochastic right so we've got guys who win these like milli makers and, and like these huge dfs things that that person it, i don't know what category they fall under but that person has a very specific relationship with DraftKings, where if you're not physically at a book betting heavy wagers like that you're on a tier program where you're getting these things and it's not a t-shirt harry and matt for betting a million dollars they're not giving you a DraftKings t-shirt right so uh, that that would be my first initial reaction to it and, and the other is look we've all been here before where maybe and, and maybe it's a smaller book right maybe it's a book that's like you know a bet fair whatever the hell it is right where it's like hey you want to put 500 dollars on something because the pgf whispered in your ear or something like that and what happens they come back and they cap that bet or they say the bet is under review so mm -hmm. it's not easy to get a 1.45 million dollar bet through anywhere Harry. Yeah. anywhere so look a lot of times what happens, you see these pre-tweets where it's like Darren Ravel says, hey, BetMGM just told me that somebody put $5 million on this side because people will race to that book and do it. I think, what are we talking about? We're talking about DraftKings and rightfully so because they had this huge thing. But look, that's that's either somebody with a very strong connection to DraftKings or that's that's somebody who has so much money that they're winning that that they're betting to win a thousand dollars by putting up that much money right mm -hmm. so it's that that this is a cold calculated decision this isn't you and i or matt or somebody taking out a college fund and saying <laughs> put it all on no i mean you know, <laughs> that would be my and look that would yeah. just be my initial re doesn't mean it's not cool doesn't mean it doesn't suck for the guy i'm just saying you know yeah these social media tickets are very fishy to me especially yeah. when they're posted by you know big sources such as the sports books themselves you know even seeing like br betting you know or some other you know uh house of highlights their betting page post a ticket that you know oh 17 legs and all first time or first touchdown scores and first baskets and stuff like that like, right one I'm leg always, to go one leg to go does he hedge yeah <laughs> like I'm, I'm so skeptical of these i mean i think it's all in promotion as yeah, well you know as many as that we see that could be real or also the same amount that could also be just you know easily photoshopped and cropped to be a fake ticket so i don't know something like that i just can't can't imagine somebody putting that type of money you know on brennan just Staley. for eleven thousand dollar <laughs> return i mean really yeah if, if you've got 1.4 million to wager do you really need the 11 grand that should be in your couch cushion underneath your Very couch true. cushion yeah yeah that's yeah. inexcusable all right, a uh, little look ahead. Yeah, let's do it. Um, I saw where the Bengals line went from plus three and a half to plus four, and that total came down a half a point. It opened at 51. It's now 50 and a half. The Eagles line offshore was seven and a half. It's now down to seven, yeah. and the total went up a half a point. And the Chiefs opened at nine and a half. It's now down to eight and a half. So some Jaguar love, and rightly so. And the total came down from 51 and a half to 49. 
So I jumped on, and, and look, I'm spending on this, but I took the, at four, I took the bills on the money line. So that's mm. minus 200. So I bet them at minus two. I, I don't know, I don't believe this thing to, to dip since it opened at three and a half and has been bet up. I think it will continue to be bet up and it has nothing to do with Cincinnati. I think people are just continuing to buy into this Buffalo thing. And I am too, to the extent where I just don't think they lose the football game. Mm. So that's why I bet them. And, and another thing too is I'm not going to look at last week and get caught up in that whole thing with any team, how good or bad they look because it's the playoffs. And so I'm still, and, and maybe this is a cop out, but I'm still betting on the narrative, but I'm just not putting a point spread associated next just to it. Just money line. Exactly. Just gotcha. money line. The other thing I did was right away, I teased the Eagles and Chiefs. So I have Philadelphia minus one and Kansas City minus two and a half. I like that. Yeah, I'm going to cook up some sort of uh, multi-leg parlay. But for Wednesday's show, I will I will be in the lab. I cooking, love it, cooking away. Uh, but it. a couple of look aheads on the golf, some long shots that I think are some old names that are going to have a good year. I predicted earlier on on my golf podcast, swing it and ding it, that Ricky Fowler would win a golf tournament this year. He's eighty to one this week at the American Express, and Jason Day has shown signs of life in the fall too. Plus, uh, he's 55 to 1. Those are two long shots that I will sprinkle. You know, I, I had a name circled here that I was going to hit you with some mid range action. I, I just, I want to make sure the course just doesn't completely not mesh with him at all. But my God, you know, Ricky Fowler is, it's, it, it's kind of like now to a lesser extent because he's not hurt, right? But it was like if you bet Webb Simpson last week, you were getting a number that was so ridiculously low that if the guy figured something out from a health standpoint, like Ricky Fowler in this type of field, yeah. if he finishes top 20, will never be 80 to one again. No. Right? No. Like, so I get what you're saying. It, it's a very tough ask. Uh, what do you think about Tom Hogue right here? Hoagie? One? Yeah. Well, Hoagie's playing really well, man. He's a great iron I'm player. We had um, him um, on the uh, the other show I do on on uh, Odd Shopper. I had him in a trio to beat Mitchell, and um, shit if I remember. But both guys missed the cut. I mean, Hokey's playing really strong golf. He mm -hmm. comes in. He's motivated with the TCU loss, forty five to one in this field. Yeah, I think that's pretty good value. I really yeah, do. I they, mean, I'm just surprised. Again, something must be off with the course fit or something along well, those lines because these, these golf courses are pretty easy for these guys. These, these are they go low at this tournament because they yeah. play on three different golf course courses. Yeah. Um, it's a 54 hole cut, um, you know, and then they go to PGA West, uh, the stadium course for Sunday's final round. Right, which is cut down to how many guys? It'll be probably plus top 60 and ties or something okay. yeah but it's a three day but that's key here is this is new isn't it like yep. last week no they, they always play on three different golf courses for this tournament this is in uh, palm springs but the cut being after the the 54 hole well it's because everybody's got to play all three all courses three. right so it's yeah. you know that's it's the same way at pebble beach oh okay i guess you're right yeah yeah, yeah. all right good stuff any uh anything in the nba i am running one other non-sport play that we talked about i'll Give you this real quick. You've got one of the hottest teams in hockey at home oh getting plus money. Who's this? I'm taking, I'm taking the Seattle Kraken. The Kraken. Oh Give me the Kraken at home. You can't name one player on the Kraken. Nope. Not Neither at all. I. <laughs> Not at all. I don't need to. They've been playing good puck, though, apparently. Go ahead. <laughs> Go ahead. All right. Get <laughs> All right, I got a couple NBA picks today. I am going with the Utah Jazz on the money line against the Minnesota Timberwolves. And I think a lot of people are viewing this game as like a Rudy Gobert type of revenge game or something of that sorts. Um, but the Minnesota Timberwolves have been very bad the past two weeks. And especially considering the D'Angelo Russell issue that they have now, he could potentially either be getting traded or wanting out. There's just not enough ball to go around between him and Anthony Edwards. So that's a big problem. And then with the way Laurie Markkinen has been playing, I think he's going to come in and he's going to, you know, take over that turf in Minnesota tonight. So I got them for plus 114 on a money line. I also have the Boston Celtics minus eight against the Charlotte Hornets. This one's a pretty simple one. Just a good team beating up on a bad team. Charlotte Hornets rank pretty high in pace in the NBA, but their backcourt just is not going to be able to stop the combo of Jason Tatum and Jalen Brown. 
It's just they're, the Celtics seem to be on cruise control right now. And actually, I think JB might be out. But regardless, I think Tatum is just too much of a task for them, especially yeah. at small forward. I, I can't imagine Gordon Hayward, you know, putting a stop to what Jason Tatum has going on. And then my last one, going with my New York Knicks, winners of eight of their last oh, nine. Oh, oh. And oh. Uh, we're taking on the Toronto Raptors tonight. So I'm going with Julius Randle, double-double, and the Knicks to win. At yes. plus 126, I mean... I, I bought it. I, I was yes. saying just a few months ago, trade Randall. You know, I was entirely you, off. You the hated game. him. Yeah, hated him. Hated him. Hated his, you know, body chemistry. You hated the coach. About him. Oh yeah, Tibbs. He could have yeah. gone too. And honestly, honestly, I think with a different coach, this team could still be, you know, three or four games ahead of where they are. But they're playing good basketball right now, and I can't question what they have going on. And that includes Julius Randall and wow. Jalen Brunson leading us. So. You know, I'm sticking with it, and I'm riding a Randall double-double because I don't think the big men, obviously no true center in Toronto, and the Knicks at home, I really think he's going to take advantage of the matchup against Ananobi and uh, them over there. Now, that Seattle. qualifies, Aton as him being Cherokee'd up on Julius Randall tonight. Absolutely. Um, Seriously. I mean, 100%. I'm might as well just go over the two and a half threes at plus money if you can still get it. Julius! You might. You might. You might oh, want to. Oh, Julius. All right. Well, we appreciate you rolling with us here. Jam Pack Show, as always. Thumbs up. Subscribe on your way out. We'll be back on Wednesday. More Eagles, Giants stuff that I'm sure will be creeping into the conversation. We've got a bunch of other golf we will hit on heavily here. Nice to see Taylor, Mutt, Chris Kirk coming up there. Nice mm -hmm. uh, top 20s there. So we're going to throw a bunch of golf stuff out as well. We'll see you Wednesday.